Good morning, hope you all are doing well today. Welcome back to the channel. So I just went on a little drive to Starbucks and I'm all ready to go for this one, guys. We had some great games that I recorded yesterday and I can't wait to watch them back with you here. You know how I always do some sort of version of Revenants every other month, whether it's uh, Iteran Revs, whether it's Alzer Revs, whether it's just straight Madoc Revs, but this time's a little bit different. It's a little bit more concrete and it's a little bit all over the place, or less all over the place, we'll say. So this one's just a Devotion Siege Revs list, and it was tons of fun. We got four wins in a row. Not to spoil it or anything, but we got some really good matchups, and, you know, if you guys want to see serious matchups to see how this is going to play against a lot of what's going on right now, we've got tons of great stuff. we got Frost, we've got... Um, <laughs> I should know this. We got Blaze of Glory, Skellige, and I believe somewhere along the line, it's Nature's Gift and potentially Nilfgaard. We'll have to look at it. It's been, you know, a whole 24 hours since I've seen it, so we'll go for it here. Really easy just to get a Dahlia down for an Archer. When you're playing against Frost, I'm looking to get out these leader charges early so, you know, we can expect that maybe they'll go and they'll crank one in. There it is, right? Just get it out of the way here and we can basically have less to worry about later there's consideration to put down the second archer now with these archers in the past they were really big win conditions for some of the decks that i made however in this one here it's not a priority because we have siege because we have a lot of warfare cards and the resupply ability is just huge on some of our siege engines so you know there's a lot of other things to set up the madoc just besides or not Madoc, the Revenants besides the, um, the Archers in this event. So, I think they certainly play for the provisions there, the Archers. They give us a lot of reach and help with removal, but, you know, it's not the core strategy that we have here. And I would think in a matchup like Frost, the Revenants self-cannibalizing on the roads are going to really help us get, you know, a, a ton of value back, because we're losing a lot of points from the Frost, so if we're able to just kind of more or less refresh our rows then we're looking pretty healthy here i lock the winter queen because there's not really going to be a better lock in this matchup you know maybe Aridin, but uh we would just want to remove that as quickly as possible especially if they have like a purify on a taskmaster i want to lock that there so now we can focus our efforts on pinging other things down so that the revenant can actually get some value here I know what you're thinking. I just wanted to do a little bit of a bluff there. You know, it could have been an ugly situation. Um, we would have had some reach with the Marine plus the leader, but it wouldn't have been pretty. So, you know, obviously I have to respect the fact that we can't keep greeting it here, guys. We have to look for a pass. And, you know, um, I should really be a little bit more punished for this one here, but again, it's one of those things where I just know that we're trading bronze cards and, you know, I had a little bit more room to push there because they didn't see an amphibious, so they would think that the amphibious would just bring us right back into the round. Little do they know I didn't have it, so, you know, before we get caught too far, we'll just pass here and keep the card advantage going on to round two to defend the bleed. I would expect that if we're playing Frost, they're probably going to go for the 2-0 because they know that we have a lot of engines and we do pretty well on a long round. So I'm sort of preparing for that there. Vincent's a nice little tech for this deck um, just because, I'm, you know, if we're playing against a deck that has a tall base power unit, it plays for really good reach and it helps get that immediate removal or that ping down for one of our revenants. So that's kind of why the Vincent's there. It's like a cheap tall punish, um, assuming it's not boosted. And because we're missing some good cards here, you know, there's consideration to go John into Amphibious into something else, just so that we can get a little bit of the cards rotated out of the deck. Because we have the John Tutor, we have the Amphibious Tutor, and then of course we have the Natural Finn from the Hubert. But uh, we have to definitely get seven more orders before we're able to see that. And, you know, I go for the Archer here just because I don't believe it's going to see a lot of value in round three. They'll just move it up to the other row, so we can't really start with that. 
and they have bruisers so if I make a copy with it with the leader it's not gonna look too good so I'm thinking basically we either leader a revenant or we leader the Carrick marine and you know help keep some of our siege engines alive um, bombardments actually pretty good we've got quite a few siege engines here obviously we want to pull into siege and we miss it so now we're kind of at a disadvantage here you know I've gotten lucky in this game already in round one with um, getting that really nice pass but now we have to sort of bring this all together and try to take it home so it's gonna be tough you know we have a lot of bronzes in hand I mean Baron's gonna do really well here Vincent should do pretty well here and you know there is an opportunity to pull into siege with the Raffords so Raffords is kind of the MVP in this case and I haven't made sort of a siege deck or even a Revenant's deck since Raffords came out and I think it's pretty much like what it needs in some sense because when you're playing like a lot of the um, Revenant decks you're using a lot of soldiers so the crew ability on it's very easy to get and uh, you know, I don't play Inspired Zeal in this case. We're greeting it a bit more. We have a defender to put it behind. There's so many points. And priorities to take away that dominance. Don't think we want to double boost it. There is a consideration to take our AA here just so that we can start using more of these orders as well as, you know, getting a little bit better chance to pull the siege like we have five turns left on the cooldown before we can pull another, so if we get Siege, it's getting, you know, less than optimal here. That's just a huge reset. Problem is, we know um, they're going to eat through that Defender in no time at all, so we don't really want to boost it. Um, we definitely want to take away the Dominance here. So just an easy reset off the get-go. And that's nice because it actually helps us set up our Falibor quite well. Let's boost this here to keep the points on top. And, you know, it's a little bit of a scary state where we don't have any of these um, sieges established and we don't have any warfare cards to refresh the cooldown so it's it's tricky getting these out now is probably something we just really need to do and I kind of want to greed the formation as well it's tough I shan't fail. I cannot fail. good hit with that one there now we can sort of work on taking out the Auburn King we have a Good amount of round control, we just have to worry about the frost, and if they don't have frost for both rows, then, you know, we can start stacking ranged and greeting a little bit more, but uh, frost going for a few more turns is going to be kind of annoying. We'll just warm that up, why not? The problem with this matchup is that it's not as big of a lead as you think, even though it's 20 odd points with only one card difference. Monsters just has a way of bringing out this tempo and that's what I'm talking about things like that the toad prints crazy crazy A few days ago I was talking about like how you could pretty much jam toad prints into any deck for uh, for monsters and this is a good example of like how you know, it's not even really part of the archetype, however, it just works pretty well. There goes Hubert.
And, you know, Vincent in this matchup right now is not really giving us an ideal target. It's uh, sort of a, a big trade down for us here, but in most instances I've been seeing it's been working quite well. So hopefully we'll have a good example of that in one of the next games. And Vincent would have been really nice there. But uh, we gotta wait till next turn. Hopefully we find a better target than that. Not too worried about the frost at this point. When we see like a uh, natural selection come out, the draws just weren't optimal for them here. Uh, our best bet on this is going to be taking <laughs> Vincent for a two here. Um, you know, looking at the Imlareth being like, all right, that's fine. Uh, you know, will they be able to come back with enough points to get ahead here? They need 19 to win. Osroll is not enough. The Nagel far into Osroll is not enough. And that'll do it. It was a closer game than what we would have liked. However, we did miss Siege. Moving on to game two, we got Nature's Gift, the whole Symbiosis archetype. This has been so strong over the last couple months, and we are on blue coins. So it's going to be very tricky to get out of the round alive and, you know, not lose on even here. I have to respect that. And we have a handful of Warfare cards, which is not ideal. Um, you know, the Rebukes do trade up pretty well in this case because they have, like, the Sorceresses. If we ping... Um, you know, one of the Hamadryads, we can remove it with the Rebuke, maybe get some extra Purify value, not Rebuke, the, the Boiling Well, but, you know, get some extra Purify value if there's something with Vitality beside it, so, you know, I feel like they're worth keeping in this case. I know it's going to be tricky for them to remove the Archer with a Shield, so that's why we're going for that there. I like to try all the stratagems here and there and just kind of see what I'm liking, and for this one here, I think the Shield just felt pretty good. That's what I'm talking about here. So, like, you know, leader charge expended. A lot of tempo coming out here. We could just put down one ping and take a rebuke on it. And then just start to accumulate more charges here. This is one of those things where it's like... I'd like to remove it. Because it is symbiosis, it does have two damage. It's just, I know that if I go and I, uh, I take the boiling oil on this one here, it's, you know, gonna let a lot of other things that we don't want to see survive, like the sorceresses and whatnot. And boiling oil is a little bit slow, but it's one of those things. I'm just kind of, I'm thinking about it. There's also consideration to take Vincent for the reach. It puts points on our side of the board. And, you know, you're thinking, why would you go and do that? But think about it this way. It's playing for 5 base plus the 6, 7 off the damage. Plus, maybe if they play 5 special cards, an extra 5 points. So, um, that was kind of the, the rationale when it comes to that. And now we got double sim last coming down. And we have, you know, a couple extra save leader or... Um, the charge is on the archer, and, you know, at least we can maybe ping one down or remove one. But, uh, this play is going to be tough for us to get out of here. It's nice to see such a big commitment on round one. Getting Simulas out there is not... It's obviously hard for us to get out of the round, but at least we don't have to deal with that in the long round three if we can get there, right? The Valley of Flowers. There is no place more beautiful. Dark clouds gather over Tamaria. 
and just reaching for this because I feel like the Revenant is going to save us here. We have a ton of ones on the board and what I'm actually looking to do is not necessarily go for the Treants first, but you know, go for that second Whisperer that I put. So when they play a special this turn, hopefully we get the other one on three power. We'll ping it down twice, use the Revenant, and then we can start getting those passive points per turn off just all these little Treants that they have. And you know, at this point of the round, we just have to see it through. Um, hoping that they go tall on something so we can get a really good uh, Baron. It's crazy because after pushing so hard earlier on in the round with the sim last play, you would think that they would keep the temple, but the circle really helps us get a little bit more space here. So, you know, now we're up a little bit and we want to protect this from another circle. So we can just go ahead and boost it like that. Gets the Hubert out. We used a lot of orders and that's actually pretty good because we don't necessarily need that for round three. I like the deck in here and you see how many points we cranked up by just using a Revenant and a Marine. It's nuts. So don't underestimate the deck, guys. Took the first round. Maintain last say. We have Baron for the Gord if we need it. That's all I wanted. Most of these Nature's Gift decks are Devotion. It's going to be very difficult for them to get around any sort of Defender we put up. Um, you know, so the back row is going to get a ton of value if we get like the Archers back there or some of the Siege Engines. And we'll play it smart and take it to round 3 because I know guys, like it's going to be very tricky to get out of this round. They're just going to crank and then we're not going to be able to get our card back. So, handful of Golds. It's a much different round three hand than we had last game, I can tell you that much. And the lock is not super needed. Like, think about it this way. They have so many ways to access the... Um, Dry its caress that they'll just purify anything we deal with. We have two, three sieges in hand, a lockout. I feel like um, playing the Kedwani from hand is not as good as playing it from Amphibious. So I often like to just put it back if we get it like that. And once they see Donamir, think about how it, how much effort it's going to be to get through it. Okay, there's a heat wave, <laughs> but it's uh, a devotion check. I guess uh, that one's figured out. You never know these days. Sometimes it just uh, it looks devotion until it's not. So wanted to get at least one out before I put the siege, but now I have to respect the fact that we have to. You know, start cramming them down. I didn't think we'd have a chance to put like a second one down before the rebuke started coming out, so. The only good human is a dead human. A lot of cards that are pretty annoying right here. I want to prioritize maybe keeping some of these siege engines alive. So, you know, Carrick Marine just seems to be kind of a safe play in this case. Just because I see five points of damage sitting on the board. And that leader plays for quite a few points, if you think about it. The nine points from the initial three, plus the six on the second, and then you have each of them boosting by four. So that was actually a really good leader. I 
Now, this is quite the ambitious play. I'm thinking that if they would have had a rebuke, they would have used it by now. Just because we left one of our sieges at 4p on the back row and they know that ticks every single turn. So you would think that maybe they would try to go and remove that earlier. Um, Rafford's coming down from hand is a little bit scary. Um, didn't see them play a rebuke before, so they do go into the Bountiful Harvest, and that's Stop just fine. And to be quite honest with you, I felt like it was necessary just to remove that card, and this just seemed like the best way to do it. So, little 3 2 1, and uh, we can just click that and get that engine started. Go ahead and play one of these, and put down formation, which is going to finish our scenario here, and just kind of go crazy on the board, get the extra ping here. Hope I was wishing that, you know, we could get rid of one of these front cards, but it's fine. And that creates quite the gap here. So if they miss scored, we have a backup target, which is pretty good. I see an opportunity to remove Dunka. And, you know, it comes at the expense of one extra point on that it just felt worth it because normally when they see that dunk is at risk they'll just go ahead and use it so we lost a point but really we got back a few points really got to remove that one just to get that engine off the board. Now they're only really working with one real engine. Uh, force Protector in case they play Rebukes and get Death Blows. And then, you know, playing around the Surprise Gezerus and trying to ping down that back row. Normally when you see Fove go in front row when the row's that empty, they probably don't have a Gezerus, but... Coming up with Gord, so they might have something better than Gord. But I still feel like it's appropriate to go ahead and take a reset on it. Take no chances. If they have Heat Wave, they might have like a Becker's Rock Slide as well. So I just wanted to use it. And <laughs> I guess that'll be the game. Going on to round three. Third game of the day. Now... That's what it was. It wasn't Nilfgaard today. There was two Frost games. So in case you thought we didn't deserve the first one, we got another one here just to kind of set it in stone. We'll try this one again. It is a different opponent, I think. So I'm kind of going by the same strat that we used last time. When you see Frost, um, I kind of feel like it's necessary. We'll put down the archers and get to spend the leader. And how much you want to bet, the first thing they do is see Mind Reader Q. So... This time we're playing on the other side of the coin too. Last time we were on red, this time we're on blue. It's a little bit of a different game. So I'd like to see how we can kind of deal with it. It doesn't allow us to push as far. It kind of makes it so that we have to actually look for a pass, like a temple pass, like let's get out of the round kind of thing. Um, there is consideration here to dump Raffords and Prey. I'm thinking about it because we have crew. And there it is. Raffords for MVP. Raffords will probably get us out of the round. Now, to remove that, they're going to need an Imlaris Wrath, a Parasite, or a 
natural selection and the, the apparent venom. So I felt pretty confident that we'd probably be able to get this to work. And sure enough, we did. So this is gonna potentially save us here. Let's go into the Marine. Get some damage going here, perfect. And then just boost that up to respect the fact that, you know, they didn't remove it this time, but it doesn't mean they can't. And I think I have to be a little bit, you know, kind of on board with swinging here. Don't really want to play any of our Siege engines, but the Revenant is not a bad card to play here. And that really puts us in a position where we could pass, and we've gotten some of that deck thinned out. So, you know, there's a consideration here that if they do go ahead and play some... Oh, perfect. Um, that's not too bad. The Frost is gone, so I'm thinking hit down the Conqueror, and then we can look for a Vincent next turn. They won't even see it coming. And this is, like, some pretty good Vincent value. Think about it this way. Two... Base power, 6 damage, and then sets up the Revenant perfectly. Bit of a slow play, but it keeps them in it. I think that, you know, with this here, it's probably going to push them out of the round. I kind of like the situations where we force them to play twice if they want to win it, but I think that they're a little smarter than that in this case, so here we go. We took the first round at what expense? It wasn't too bad. You know, we would have spent a Dahlia here, the first Amphibious Charge, but other than that, it's not horrible. We have some time to pull into some of the, the big plays here. Falibor is good to see. I'm just thinking about the rev from hand, but... I'll tuck it back. Bombardment's not really better here, so we need to pass, and we need to go for round three. So, obviously pulling into Hubert's no good. That'll come out naturally after two more orders. We need Siege, we need Donomir, and I'm feeling pretty good about it. Because if we get Siege in this game, we actually didn't have it last game, we still won. So I'm feeling pretty confident in this matchup now. Drawing into it's pretty good, because we can just mulligan it back. And honestly, that's the best we're going to get. Um... You know, Rafford's round one helped get some of that deck thinned out, which helped us pull the um, the siege. But you know, more often than not, there's maybe like one gold card we don't get. So we shall conquer this world as we have conquered countless others. And we'll just jam here, because we don't have a Dahlia now, so there's no sense in making copies before we put them down. Let's just get our Siege Engines out there. Play a third one with the Amphibious. By the way guys, this deck is actually really good if you're doing any sort of like weekly challenges where they say use order 40 times or something like that. Like the journey challenges have a lot of stuff like that. Or damage a unit a set amount of times. Um, this deck completes both those challenges like in one game. It's wild. Because there's so many orders, so many cooldowns, like it's pretty nuts. And we get Toad Prince a second time. Two times in one day, I mean... 
our bombardment's looking a little sad, but uh, points are points. Try to go for the classic board wipe here, and then at this point we can probably just play the second bombardment before they remove the second one. And then the third one, you know what I mean? It's a race to get them all out here. In this case, we could try and snipe the Winter Queen. I shall teach them a lesson they will not forget. Actually, that's a perfect Falibor, right? And then we can keep our Siege alive if we play it on melee, so that's pretty good. Um, get rid of all that pesky stuff, now they're just sitting on points. They have one engine, but we do have Baron for the reset on that, if that's the best thing we've got, so... Now seeing a little bit of a delayed Aridin is pretty good. Uh, lock potential here is phenomenal unless they have a Purify, so we'll go ahead and use that. Get the order on that taken care of so we get more damage later on. And then I'm just trying to ping it down just in case because I feel like, you know, if they do have Purify, then we certainly still want to like work at removing it. Of course, Taskmaster comes down here, so... looking at the situation and it doesn't look like any of our sieges are going to die this turn so we can actually just kind of hold off here and then just hit them with a couple bombardments the annoying part though is that we don't necessarily want to ping down that foglet but we're in a situation where you know it's still there don't want to bear on too early because it's where it gets kind of tricky so i'm just hoping that either we don't snipe it Yeah, even then, that just hits that, so... But priorities, we remove that, and then we can just take that off the Falibor and just get some more going, and the revs are going to start carrying from here, because we have, like, a good amount of damage left. And that's just a better reset, isn't it? Holding out for it to be the best reset that we find, so Baron on front row, no games, and why don't we just cycle all the reps through at this point. And then we have, you know, another opportunity to get that going with, uh... yeah, imagine that was on the back row, we would have lost that huge reset, it would have cost us the game, so you can't greet out the extra points sometimes. Not really necessary to click there, but it's whatever. One, and we remove... There you go. To be fair, like, the only thing that would have really ruined us there with the whole rev is if they somehow pinged down one of our cards. Actually, no, we would have been able to get one more rev. Yeah. See? Ping and whatever. Um, gotta know when to stop clicking the battering rim. But that's fine, it didn't cost us the game here, even with the Osroll. Moving on to the last game of the day, we got Blaze of Glory. This one's going to be a super tough matchup because they have the right kind of control to take us down. So, I'm guessing that's probably going to be some sort of iced uh, Herald list with a bunch of warriors, right? Could even maybe have like Fakushia, like I've seen so many different versions of this and it's pretty strong guys, so... It's a really awkward round one hand, because we don't want to carry too many sieges, but we have three. And then the revs from pocket as well are kind of sketchy, so... There is a consideration to play one of them here, just because we want to get some pings down for the revs. Trust. 
thought about taking the boiling oil there, but we have boiling oil for like the Herald or something, or even just that. I don't really want to lose the cooldown that we have. Can't boiling that though when the Berserker's beside it. Otherwise it'll purify it, and that's no good for us, so... Next turn we should just be able to remove that, unless they gutting slash us here. Perfect snipe, that's not a big deal. Coral with the discard package has so many points, so... You know, I'm hoping that they don't have Burna coming down next for a perfect discard, but I guess we'll find out shortly. Um, Boiling's consideration on the Coral, or that, because if we play into a long round, right, the Brock Far is going to get pretty nasty. So under normal circumstance, we could have done that to the Coral, but again, um, I was just kind of prioritizing the Brock Far. Burn is not just bad there, because it's like it's a good amount of points. It keeps us quite ahead in the round. Um, I was considering saving that Vincent, though, for like a Jetta or something later on, but getting out of the round sort of a priority for us. And no reason to pass here, we still have a lot of space, even if we just play the Revenant from hand, gave us enough room. You know, the only thing that would really keep them ahead is if they went, like, full-blown into, like, a uh, leader, or they played, like, a really big, um, Blood Eagle into something, but... We still have Amphibious for that. So Bloodthirst 3 is not necessarily a good thing. I don't think that they're going to round one iced here. There's a potential to use, let's say, Baron defensively as well on the Marguerite. But we don't have to do that in this case. So, like, one of two ways, like, I'll normally think of a matchup like this. Either you want to bleed out Iced in round two, or you just want to see if you can do better in round three. Um, with the hand like this, we don't really have a crazy bleeding hand. Like, I could just put down the defender and see how they respond to it, but we're missing a lot of good cards. And they haven't spent a lot. That's kind of what I'm looking at right here. Just have to try again in round three. We know it's going to be a big, scary long round three, so... And that's what you like to see. Three for three on the draw. We have access to Amphibious. I can Amphibious into Rafferts, and that's probably the play. Uh, John into Boiling is actually probably better than pulling out an Archer, if you think about it. And at least the defender puts us in a situation where we can get a little bit of value lost on the iced um, 
you know, they won't get the initial discard if they just try and ping Defender here and remove it. That's kind of what you expect though, like, they'll rip through the defender and just start tearing apart all the engines as we play them one by one. I find in the matchup too, when you get yourself in this position, it's really hard to stay focused because, you know, you start to see them accumulating tons of points and you find yourself in a position where your board's wiped. So, you know, we had to sort of just stick with it here and play our game plan the best we can and you know we'll put down one siege engine but then it's probably looking at getting siege down just because we want to see some more value from that vincent would have just been so nice here if we're able to save that from round one Coral comes back with Fukusha, so, you know, when I see this sort of thing, especially with a discard package, I'm thinking that maybe they don't have the provisions for Herald, which is kind of nice. I also really haven't seen the Raiders or anything come out, so, you know, you can be a little bit optimistic that the worst is already dealt with here. Just, again, continue to play the game plan that we have, even though we're down by about 30 points in this case. And Baron doesn't see a lot of value in the matchup either. Gotta start thinking about that Falibor. Also have to finish the scenario in a good spot. Um, if we can... Amphibious next will finish proccing that. And then we can look at using our John and getting out a Warfare shortly after. We don't have the crew set up which kind of sucks but... You know, something's better than nothing here, and... Unbelievable. <laughs> Gotta use this before we play a Warfare card, just... Just as a reminder here. We have to really hope that um, there's no Hjalmar here, right? Because that could be problematic for us too. Anything that can come back and get rid of that 5 that we haven't seen. <laughs> Reasons for the feeble of heart. Blood Eagle. And I guess they've played all the warriors that they have. So that's definitely something to get excited about here. Gives us a chance. And just before we have any less... There we go. We have to sort of play around a potential Morgvar too, because I haven't seen anything like that, but a lot of times they will run like a, a tall punish like that. So if it's not Morkvarg, it's going to be like a Hjalmar, um, sometimes Turgvi, it's usually like one of the three. So lucky for us, we got it to work the first time.
and Falibor here looks pretty good. Um, we'll probably be able to maintain that board state. We'll just hit it with another bombardment while we have a chance. And I'm considering taking leader here because if they remove the last marine, we don't have a leader. And if they're playing into that, like, you know, it could be a problem for us. So it's better just to get those points than not to have them at all. So we've got a perfect 3 2 1. And then we can do some sort of like defensive reset with the Baron. let it warm up because at this point in the match you kind of have to worry about that sort of stuff right we kind of have to greed that extra point it's such a close game and seeing a card like that is a losing condition so we hit it there and I could honestly just Falibor off that and kill it and then taking that reset on the Adalia is enough points to take us to the win thanks for watching guys